Today's lesson is going to cover reflections. Just like you would have a reflection in the mirror, we can reflect geometric figures across lines that are drawn, usually on a coordinate plane, but they don't have to be on a coordinate plane. So another word for reflection is flip. Um, the line that actually causes the flip is referred to as the line of reflection. And that's what this line is right here. And if this right here was our pre-image, then this would be called our image. What's important to notice is that the distance from the line of reflection from each of the shapes is exactly the same size. So the distance, say maybe it's about an inch here, it's an inch from both. The pre-image and the image are both about an inch away from the line of reflection. We see lines of reflection in nature all the time, like a mountain uh, being reflected in the, uh, the lake. Here, the actual horizon itself would be our line of reflection. So this would be a horizontal line of reflection. So let's start looking at examples. Our first example shows us a, possi a possible reflection. If I'm looking at this and we're trying to decide if it actually is a reflection, I should probably try to kind of like test it. So let's, let's actually do a, a little bit of a test. Let's test it by attempting to draw a line of reflection where we think it might be. I think the line of reflection might actually be the y-axis itself. The way to know for certain if it really is, we're going to use the grid to count to see if the distance from each point to the line of reflection is exactly the same. Let's try counting A. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So our A prime is exactly the same distance from the A to the line of reflection. Now it has to hold true everywhere. So C is 1, and the matching C prime on the other side is also 1. The B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So every single vertex of the shape of the triangle is exactly the same distance from the line of reflection. So to answer our question, is yes, it is a line of reflection. And what is the line of reflection? The line of reflection is the y-axis. Looking at this next example, trying to decide if it was a reflection or not, I can see that if I were to try to flip over the triangle on the bottom, up above, it wouldn't line up with the triangle that's given. There's no way that this could be flipped, maybe rotated, but not really flipped. So the answer to this question, is this a reflection? The answer is no. And if it's not a reflection, then there is no line of reflection. So let's actually do a reflection from start to complete finish. So as I plot these points, I want you to go ahead and plot the points too for the triangle X, Y, Z. First off, let's plot 1, 1. This is X. 3, 0. And 2, 4. Go ahead and connect those dots to make our triangle. There we go. And don't forget to label those points. We have X, Y, and Z. I like to use a different kind of color to show off the line of reflection. I think you should too. 
Remember there's colored pencils in the buckets in the middle of your table, so you should grab those. Go ahead and highlight the x-axis. So as we reflect each of these points over the blue line, we need to make sure they're each exactly one distance away from the exact same distance away from it. X is one distance away from the line of reflection. So I want to make sure that the new X is also only one spot away. Z is one, two, three, four spots above it. So let's count one, two, three, four spots below it. And Y sits right on top of the line of reflection. It doesn't move at all. Connect those dots. And you have a reflection of the triangle above. Don't forget to label those with the new letters. We have X prime with a little apostrophe, Y prime, and Z prime. Besides actually creating and drawing the reflection, we also want to be able to write a rule. So if we want to write a rule, we're going to have to kind of compare these points. Let's compare each of the points for the red triangle and the green triangle. Our red triangle has points 1, 1, 3, 0, and 2, 4. Our green triangle has points 1, negative 1, 2, negative 4, and also 3, 0. If you look at the differences, the only difference between our red points and our green points are the Ys. Notice that the Ys switch from positive to negative. So the way we can write our rule is that we're going to keep our x's. So our x just stays x. But our y's are going to switch around from positive to negative. So it goes from positive y to negative y. So there's our rule. Let's try one that reflects over the y-axis. Let's plot these three points. Negative 1, positive 4. 4, negative 2. And 0, negative 3. So this is the triangle that we're going to try to flip. Let's highlight the y-axis, since that's going to be our line of reflection. There we go. Notice, though, that some of the points are on one side of the line of reflection, and some of the points are on the other. We even have a point that actually sits on top of it. So we need to consider that each of these points will flip a different direction. If we take a look at the point negative 1, 4, which was our A, it's to the left of the line of reflection. So when it flips, it's going to go over to the right. It's one spot, one space away from the blue line of reflection. So the new A prime is also going to be one spot away as well. Next is our B point. B, which was at 4, negative 2, it's to the right of the blue line, the line of reflection, so the reflection will be to the left. It is 1, 2, 3, 4 spots away, so let's count 1, 2, 3, 4 spots to the left. This is B prime. Now the last one is our, our C. Our C, which is sitting right now actually on 
the line of reflection, isn't going to move at all. So those points still stay overlapped. So C prime doesn't move at all because it's sitting on top of the line of reflection. And let's go ahead and connect our dots. Now, even though the two shapes do kind of overlap each other, we see a very symmetrical picture. All reflections create symmetrical pictures. Yes, sometimes they do overlap. Sometimes the points move from left to right, or right to left, or a combination of both. But if you end up something that doesn't look symmetrical, then probably one of your coordinates are off a little bit. Let's also try to create a rule for this reflection as well. Let's write down all of the points for our red triangle. Our first point is negative 1, 4. Next point is 4, negative 2. And third point is 0, negative 3. Our green points are sitting at very similar, but a little bit different. 1, 4. Negative 4, negative 2. And lastly, C, which stays exactly where it was at, which was at 0, negative 3. If we look to see what is different about these points, we notice that our x's are the things that have changed this time. But our y's have stayed exactly the same numbers. This means that our rule is going to go from y and x to switching the x's to negatives, or vice versa positives. But the y's are all going to stay exactly the same. Our last example is going to have our triangle reflect over a line graphed by y equals x. Let's start by plotting all the points. We have an x at negative 2, positive 1. We have a y at 0, 3. and a z at negative 3, negative 1. So it's a rather skinny triangle, but it is still a triangle nonetheless. Now the line that we're supposed to reflect it over is not any of the black lines, not the axes, not the x-axis or the y-axis. It's a line that is graphed by doing y equals x. If y is equal to x, then, then when x is 1, then y is 1. And when x is 2, then y is 2. This, ends, this gives us a dots, this gives us dots that look like this. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and so on. So this is the line that we want to actually reflect it over. Reflecting the red triangle over this black line for y equals x is a little tricky, but I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to help you um, quite a bit. The way we can do it is we can count in two directions. We can count down and then over. We all can see where the triangle should end up. It should end up lower than the black line. But exactly where? Here's how you do it. We count going from the point down to the black line, and I see one, two spots. 
So that's going down. So I'm going to go over to the right, also two spots, one, two. Right here is our new coordinate. The other coordinate we have is one, two, three spots. So one, two, three spots gives us our new coordinate here. And the last one is one, two, three, one, two, three. This should place our triangle in the correct spot. Let's connect the line, connect the dots to make sure that it does look like a reflection. Yeah, there we go. It does look like a reflection. So if I try to clean this up a little bit and eliminate those lines, then you should be able to see, there we go, that we do have the reflection of the red triangle. But it all comes from just counting in two directions, down and right, down and right, down and right. Let's try to create a rule for this reflection. Our points were at negative 2, comma 1, 0, comma 3, and negative 3, comma negative 1. Now the point that was at negative 2, positive 1 is right here. It has switched over here, which is now at positive 1, negative 2. Our point at 0, 3, right here, has switched down to over here. So it's went down and went to the right, which is now at 3, 0. And the last point, which was at negative 3, negative 1, which was sitting right here in red, moving down and to the right, is sitting here now at negative 1, negative 3. What's the difference between the red and green points? I see that in each case, the x's and the y's, like the negative 2 and the 1, have switched around to 1, negative 2. 0, 3, 3, 0. Negative 3, negative 1, negative 1, negative 3. So the way that we can write a rule that works for this is we say that it starts normal, x and y, but when it changes, the y's become the x's, and the x's become the y's. This is how you write the rule for, y, for reflections over y equals x.